In today's webinar, how can I integrate the UN Sustainable Development Goals into my teachings? We are using a hands-on approach to explore these three questions. What are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? How can I translate these goals into meaningful activities for my learners? How do I motivate learners to understand and implement the values of these goals in their lives? We will look at practical examples across grades and subjects from primary to tertiary to enable learners to contribute to their community. We have uh, two presenters from the British Council today, Meena and Priya, and we have Manisha, our sign language interpreter from Access for All. Meena has been a teacher and a teacher educator for 30 years in India and overseas. She has worked as a trainer with IAM Ahmedabad and the U.S. State Department. She works extensively with NGOs educating underprivileged communities. Meena also writes textbook materials for the CBSC. And as a training consultant for the British Council, Meena works on Pan India projects. She is passionate about teacher development. Priya is a senior academic manager for English programs with the British Council in India. She started her English language teaching career volunteering for the British Council Times of India Partnership in 2011 and later joined the Aga Khan Foundation to work on their ELC project. Priya has worked as a freelance consultant with the British Council on a multitude of large scale teacher development projects across the country and she joined the team full-time as an academic manager in 2019. Priya is committed to teacher professional development and learning new languages. Over to you, Priya and Meena. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Meena, could you please start sharing the screen? Yes. Here we go. Thank you, Meena. Good evening, everyone. Like Michelle mentioned, we will be looking at the topic, how do you integrate the UN Sustainable Development Goals into your teaching? I'll quickly take you over the learning outcomes for the day. We'll be, by the end of this session, you will have understood the framework and the implications of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You will have explored the relevance of these policies as values which you can communicate to your learners. And you would have analyzed examples to integrate these goals into your curricula so that the learners can practice them inside and outside their classrooms. I'd just like to mention here that while we've covered a wide range of subjects in this presentation, we'll be focusing a little bit more on English language learning in, in the examples that we share and going forward in our webinars as well. So let's look at what is the United Nations very quickly. The UN was established after the Second World War with about 51 member states. It currently stands at 193 to help stabilize international relations and to give peace a more secure foundation. What are the aims of the U United Nations? Of course, to maintain international peace and security, to promote human rights, foster social and economic development, provide humanitarian aid during conflict, famine, and disaster. And finally, not uh, least, but not last, but not the least, protecting the environment. On the slide, you can see the definition of uh, what sustainable development means. In a nutshell, it means that we are ensuring the health and safety of future generations without overexploiting current resources. What are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals? There are 17 global goals for sustainable development, which could mean an end to extreme poverty, inequalities, and climate change by 2030. These 17 goals are further broken down into worldwide, ta worldwide targets and indicators. So the framework of the 17 SDGs is up on your screen now. There are 169 targets. 
which are very local, specific, and time bound. There are 247 indicators which collect data and measure these targets that I just spoke about. And how, this, how all of this pans out in India is that it's coordinated by Niti Aayog and the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation through SDG India Index. Over to you, Meena. Okay, thank you, Priya. Now you've had an overview of what the UN is and what the SDGs are. We will be alternatively calling them SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. They are also known as Global Goals. So here is this iconic poster, which many of you might have already seen. And it has all the 17 goals on it. You can treat the goals together in the poster as one or you could individually pick up these icons and use them in your classrooms. A word of caution, if you're reproducing this poster, uh, please do it as it is. You cannot change any colors or fonts, and um, you also cannot use the UN logo without permission. So here are the 17 goals, and I'm going to read them out to you just for clarity in order. It starts with no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and strong institutions. And the 17th goal is the partnerships for all the previous 16 goals. So here we have the three pillars, so to say, of the SDGs. The first is the economic pillar. Then we have the environmental pillar. Then we have a social pillar. It's basically just three broad categories, but all the goals are interlinked and interdisciplinary. You cannot treat any one of them in isolation. Uh, in the classroom as well when you're implementing them. Okay, so now in the next section, we let's look at how we are going to bring these SDGs into our classrooms. How are we going to implement? Before that, you might be wondering, this is all about government and policy, and these are sustainable development goals of the UN. What relevance does it have for me as a teacher? How does it impact my student? How is it going to interest my student in the classroom? But it is very, very significant and it has a lot of benefit for the learners. So let's look at some of the impacts. The first is a raised awareness of global issues. For example, now we have climate change, very frightening effects of climate change. We have flooding all over North India. We have soaring temperatures in Europe. We have an ongoing war in Ukraine. Now, if you're going to be raising these issues in the classroom, then there is raised awareness. Uh, Priya? That we can also look at uh, this as critical thinking and problem solving, uh, raising awareness about this and developing these 21st century skills in our learners, oh, thinking oh, of solutions oh, and innovations to the problem that Meena just mentioned in, the, in their own schools for our learners and within our neighborhoods for us. Yes. Social responsibility towards communities. So when we talk about the SDGs, uh, all 17 or only some of them, then the learners start realizing that they do owe something back to their society, back to the communities. So it fosters a sense of social responsibility, which is very, very important for them to have. Number, Absolutely, number Meena. Number and I think empathy and intercultural tolerance to bringing kindness right. into their lives, into the lives of our students, uh, rise, making them rise above all the hatred and narrow-minded attitudes, and making them aware of the multiple races and ethnicities uh, around them, and also respecting each other's cultures. Uh, yes. And if they have all these kind of awareness, all these devious qualities, then responsible choices and principled behavior automatically follows. This cannot be taught. It has to come and grow from within their classrooms and within their homes. So as we go along, we'll be looking at how you can foster these qualities uh, in the classroom. So let's jump into some activities now. Here is a clip from a standard three, a class three environmental studies text. 
and the title of the lesson is Foods We Eat, um, you can see some children having a conversation. I'm reading out some of their uh, speech, some of their uh, observations. So one boy says, um, last night I ate a chapati made of bajra with jaggery. Another boy says, my mother brought noodles for us from the house where she works. We enjoyed eating it. Another child says, yesterday, no food was cooked in my house. Now, considering all these conversations, what goal could we introduce here and why? So just think about which goal you could introduce. And in the chat box, could you just put in your answers just as points? What goal could we introduce here? Yes, in the chat box, please. Okay, no Excellent. hunger. Excellent. Uh, Meena, we're getting in yeah. responses. No hunger. People are saying goal number two. Okay, zero hunger. Very good. Zero hunger. Yeah, excellent. Zero. Everybody is right on point here. Um, we could have Unequal zero distribution. Hunger. Somebody yeah. also. Okay, very good. Somebody excellent. also mentioned unequal distribution here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Quality so, education is what is also coming through. Yeah, and I can see no poverty as well, right? Yes, um, yes fantastic. So what we could have is zero hunger, no poverty, reduced inequalities, and also responsible consumption. Because think about food being wasted, um, luxurious uh, institutions having a lot of wasted food. So that also is possible. Uh, any other ideas here, Priya? Uh, like you rightly pointed out, we could also uh, talk about uh, alongside wa avoiding wasting food, we could also talk about avoiding wasting of water. Yes. What do you think, Mina? Yes, yes. Wasting water goes hand in hand with that. Now let's look at the activities which we can have in the lesson. Already the text contains some very good questions, higher order thinking skills questions. So you must have noticed that there is one child in whose house no food was cooked. What could be the reason? And then has it ever happened to you that you've been very hungry and had nothing to eat? How do you know you're hungry? How do you feel when you're hungry? So these are all very, very uh, deep and essential questions. Um, but we could also bring in some other activities. Like for example, we could have them draw a picture of their plate with their food items on it or food being thrown away in, in a garbage bin. We could also have a small discussion at their level about, you know, wasting food and uh, uh, and wasting water. So these are the kind of activities which we could have here, apart from the questions in the book. So these are the two goals which we can deal with here. Now let's look at another lesson plan for primary students. Now this is related to uh, goal 16, which is peace, justice, and strong institutions. It's taken from a website called Teaching English. It's about peacemakers and peace breakers. Basically, uh, it's, uh, the aim is to promote peace, respect, and tolerance. And they also create a peace poster. You can access this uh, lesson plan through the link, which gives you a complete breakup and also the worksheets and how to execute it in the classroom. But you notice here that there is one step which says list all the words for peace in different languages. So this is in line with the multilingual approach of the British Council and later on Priya will be talking about it. Now we are moving on to a social science lesson of class seven. Now this lesson has very good graphics. It's got an Anganwadi as, a, as an image. Uh, why an Anganwadi? Because it's empowering women to go out and work and their children are kept safely. It's already got goal five, gender equality inserted there. There's some statistics about paid and unpaid work for men and women. But apart from gender equality, what other goals could we put in here? Priya, what do you think? What other SDGs could we put in here? Yeah, I'm really tempted to look at the chat box. I can start off with one of the goals and maybe the audience can help me uh, identify some more goals that could be linked here. I think we could absolutely uh, 
it's very correct. Somebody just said quality education in the chat box. So you stole good. my answer there. Yeah. Uh, you could talk about uh, SDG number 10, probably reduced inequalities, Meena. Yes, yes. It, because uh, because I, of the imbalance in the salary. And I think right. we can that's also, right. uh, yes. Yeah, we can also talk about these. Yeah, talk work about and... SDG number eight. Yes. Correct. Decent, Decent work and work. economic growth. Absolutely. Yeah, very true. So this is a very good lesson. And it's also got all these implicit uh, factors within it. Now, let's move on to an English lesson from class seven. Now, here I must comment that having lessons from social science, from environmental studies, and the rest of them, these are all relatively easy to link to the SDGs. What if you're an English teacher with an English lesson? How do you do it? It's still possible. There are opportunities. So this is a lesson about a shoemaker, an excellent shoemaker who makes quality shoes, but then he loses all his business. And then finally, he dies of starvation. So during the lesson, he tells the narrator, they get it all. He's talking about the big firms. He says they get it all. They get it by advertisement, not by work. They take it away from us. It comes to this. Presently, I have no work. Every year it gets less. So prophetically, when he says this, he does actually lose all his work and then goes out of business. So in a lesson like this, there are questions here in the text itself saying, speak to five adults and talk about how they do their shopping. Is it in plastic packets? Where do they buy their footwear? Do they buy it locally? Or do they buy brands? Do they buy ready-made clothes? Or do they get it stitched by a tailor? What activities can we have here? What kind of activities could we put in here? What do you think, Priya? Any ideas? I think there's a lot of uh, scope here, right? Uh, as English teachers, I think we can certainly bring in the multilingual activities. Like one of these activities actually talks about it. Talk, speak to five adults in your neighborhood mm -hmm. and ask them in any language they are comfortable with. So I think as teachers, English teachers, the uh, least we could do is when our students are distressed or when they're sharing something which requires them to nuance it and articulate it. Uh, these issues are really complex and very local. So we should promote yes. uh, the use of uh, their own language and thereby promote multilingualism in the classroom to articulate yes. nuances like this. And the NEP, uh, National Education Policy 2020, actually uh, promotes this and we've linked it in the resources, uh, Meena, right? Yes, yes, I have, yeah. Very good. You could also think of a debate here a simple debate about large chains versus small enterprises that could also cover all these aspects here. So we have Absolutely. reduced inequalities, we have decent work and economic growth, and I think no poverty as well because the man actually dies of poverty. Thank you, there are some responses having. Decent economic growth is one of the answers I'm seeing. Thank you very much, all of you. Now let's move on to, we're going up the ladder slowly from primary to seventh, now we are coming to 11, class 11. There are three images here. The first one is a girl child looking after her sibling. The next one is a commercial center, a mall. The third one is women at work in a cotton field. Now there are a lot of goals which can be linked here because the basically that chapter has only two content questions at the end. But here we have a lot of possibilities for the UN SDGs. We can have no poverty, quality education. We can have gender equality and decent work. And we can have sustainable cities and reduced inequalities. So a lot of exploitation of the SDGs here. But what kind of activities could we bring in here? Yes, Priya, what kind of activities could we bring in here? I thought of having uh, a podcast, do you think? Yes, yes, Meena, why not? We could get our students to design a podcast and record their audio. Maybe yes. even create a short film, give yeah. them the dialogues and the language that they need and they could come up with a short film on the topic. 
Yes, and they could have an advocacy campaign and design a logo for it with the teachers Absolutely. helping them. Yes, thank you. The next one is uh, again a standalone lesson plan, which is again a ready-made lesson plan and you can look at the link for this. It's about poverty, today's awareness of poverty and about material and non-material needs. Uh, the interesting thing here is the discussion, which also promotes uh, our uh, language speaking skills. So how, what does it mean to be rich, to be poor? What are the universal basic human needs for well-being, material or non-material? So this lesson plan actually is from a British Council website, Teaching English, adapted from a British Council publication. And it's got a very interesting plan with a lot of worksheets for you to go through. And the, bay, uh, the foundation is on no poverty. Now we are going to a sample activity for tertiary learners. This is an interesting activity which covers a lot of skills and it will interest learners from all subjects. So here there is a discussion. First of all, we start with a discussion on concerns about climate change. Then we go on to a video, very technical video about greenhouse effect and carbon cycle, which will interest the tech learners. Then there is a text about the conference of parties. The conference of parties is a very, very topical theme because it happens every year. And it, uh, the last one was held in Egypt in 2022. And they uh, announced a whole lot of uh, climate resolutions within these conference of parties. Then there is a tech, tech talk on reducing dependence on fossil fuels which is a listening activity. And then finally, they get together and they discuss how they can activate local action. Now, activating local action is something we are going to be discussing as we go along further. Uh, the lesson plan, the link is given to you here. And the uh, SDGs here are obviously affordable and clean energy and climate action. Now, this has a lot of skills, like I said, Basically, uh, the 21st century skills, critical thinking, problem solving, they can think of solutions on how to reduce fossil fuels. They can also uh, collaborate and be creative on how to find these things, innovate how to reduce dependence, uh, innovate on how to have clean and renewable energy. A lot of uh, thought provoking activities here which can be included and which you can adapt. So I'm sure this will interest all of your learners. Uh, Priya, will you talk very, about climate change now in language education? Very true. Yes, Meena. So I think there is a lot, lot, also a lot of scope here to bring in some language activities and discuss about climate action in language education. Uh, like Meena mentioned, this is at the heart of everything that the British Council does. So we even have an open online course for any of you who is interested in this topic. Uh, we've shared resources to this in the uh, resources section. We've shared links to this in the resources section. At the yes. End. Yeah. At the end, we have a whole two, two pages on resources and credits. Thank you, Priya. Okay. Now, having seen uh, or analyzed all these activities, which you can actually go back and look into later when you have more time. Now, let's look at the next steps. What are our next steps? So Priya, can you look at this graphic and take them through it? Sure, Meena, thank you. The graphic that you see on your screen covers all the goals, but uh, the highlight for us there is that last bit of the graphic where, the, where Mother Earth is pulling all these kids who are trying to run away from her. And uh, you know it's very, depicted very beautifully saying that we're all in this together. It's really the highlight for me for, from this entire graphic. And all yes. these goals are not in isolation, but they're all interlinked. Yeah, and it's funny how Mother Earth is pulling those children back. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So these are uh, steps up on your screen. Are these steps what you can do? We looked at what should we do in the earlier slide. And here we are looking at what could we do. So any ideas in the chat, what steps can we collectively take before we take you through some of the steps we've thought through? Meena, can we have any, uh, do we have any ideas in the chat? Let me have a yes, I think uh, let's ask our audience first before we yes. express our thoughts. 
What yes. can we so, do uh, in the Kumar classroom? Is saying, very true. Anil Kumar is saying that all these SDGs are interlinked. Very true. Correct. Very true. Sankit Kasa is saying, educate everyone around us about this first. Very, Fantastic. very true. That's Fantastic. where it starts. Creating yeah. that awareness. Prohibit uh, using single-use single plastic. Single use plastic. Very true. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> applause. Applause. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Very true, Anil Kumar. Environmental awareness. Very true. Affordable and clean energy. Yes. Correct. Very yes. good answers coming in, Meena. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. I can see something. Less vehicles, petrol and diesel. Again, fantastic. How to reduce fossil fuel dependence. We just talked about that. Thank you so much. Use of public transport. They have to, I think they've read our slides. Don't you think so? <laughs> yeah. I think we should just cancel our slides because they've given us all the answers. Absolutely. They're talking about having technical skills and experience. Yeah, right. Okay, shall we uh, go to the slide then? Shall I move yes. on? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you for your responses, everyone. Thank you. So actionable measures for teachers. Now let's look at what you as teachers can do. The first one, Priya. Yeah, I think as teachers, we can definitely start right in the classroom. And I'm, sh I'm sure most of us do this. We support gender equality by allowing both, uh, you know, like uh, all genders to speak up equally in, and involving them in the decision making process. So as teachers, I think increasingly we should also reflect on this and uh, involve all genders equally within the classroom. Yes. And the second one is ask essential questions which stimulate critical thinking and problem solving. We have already uh, seen a lot of activities which stimulate critical thinking and problem solving. Problem solving is extremely important for our uh, future generations to solve all these huge issues which are coming up now and becoming more and more frightening. The climate change issue is becoming more and more frightening. But at a small level, it can be done. Um, I have an example of this boy called Rohit from Bangalore. He designed a flush uh, which would reduce water wastage by 50%. So from six liters, he reduced it to three liters. And uh, also it helped in the sanitation of the community. So he won a Google Science Prize for this. This is just one example out of thousands of examples. So in, at your level, within the school, within the learners, it is possible by asking deep thinking questions. Yeah. Very true, Meena. I think another way as uh, another measure as, as a teacher is uh, encouraging the use of multilingual approaches. Uh, like we discussed earlier, many, you know, all these deeper problems can be dealt with by using the native language. So I think multilingual approach can help with better, under better understanding of the goals and implementation of it. Yeah, empathy and rapport are the key words here. And I would Absolutely. also like to add that social emotional learning should necessarily become a part of our uh, curriculum or part of our daily routine because that's a very important aspect which we sometimes ignore when it comes to our students. Now, encourage learners to develop intercultural friendships to raise awareness. Extremely important. We see a lot of hate nowadays being spread on social media and uh, a lot of uh, narrow-minded thinking also sometimes we can see it happening. So we need to have them develop intercultural, interracial, maybe have international friendships. Now it's all possible nowadays on the net to raise awareness and also to uh, increase tolerance and sympathy within the classroom. As we saw in the impact of the SDGs earlier, justice and peace are only concepts unless they are put into practice. So you as teachers, you must be having mixed ability groups, mixed languages, mixed communities in your classrooms. So tolerance and empathy and intercultural awareness can grow within your class. That is the beginning. That's the first step. Yeah, and I think uh, sharing our skills and our knowledge with professional and other communities of practice as teachers, we can definitely do this. We, uh, within this group itself, there are so many of us and uh, you know, sharing our understanding of the issue, understanding of the topic and creating more awareness by even volunteering 
for example with your time and your knowledge yes it's very important to volunteer that's a good point thank you priya so now let's look at actionable measures for learners what can your learners do so uh, let's go step by step there is a lot they can do but we have only selected some because obviously we can't include everything so the first one priya the first one is uh, buy local eat local and encourage fair trade products i think this is crucial with all these huge chains of restaurants mushrooming up around us uh, meena i'm very curious to know what do you usually eat when you go out oh 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 that's a very tricky question priya i don't think i'm following this eat local uh, i have a favorite restaurant where i go for a chinese meal once in a way but mm. i don't know if i'm actually encouraging local products it's not a good habit no okay compost food scraps fix leaks at home use public transport there are three different elements here so let's start with public transport i think that's something all of us need to follow to save on uh, fuel wastage go paperless that again is something which is now i think quite current among all of us especially after covid um we all go paperless we do digital transactions and we try to save on printouts and paper as much as possible composting food scraps i think civic authorities are trying their best to encourage waste uh, to impose actually waste segregation and composting food scraps um, uh, responsibly and waste disposal is being done responsibly to a large extent i think many states all over our country are following it and enforcing it um, fixing leaks at home it's a very simple fact that all of us have a leaky tap and very often you don't have the time or you just don't make the time to fix that leak now just think somebody has done this uh, computation for 10 drops a minute 90 liters are wasted in one month so it's very very it's a very staggering figure 19 liters per month so it's very important to follow these simple steps yes meena that reminds me i have a leaky tap at home i need yes. to fix that yeah thank you yeah uh i think we can the point next point talks about using energy efficient lights and gadgets uh, within our uh, surroundings and at home so uh, and also recycling electronic gadgets which actually gets me to reflect how many times do we change our mobile phones meena all of us especially yeah. you know i mean sometimes even without any necessity to do so so yes, really yes, yes. points to think about Yes, I can see a comment in the chat box saying also go ball pen less. That's a very mm. uh, radical statement because it's very true that everyone is using ball pens and not fountain pens anymore. Thank you. And the next one is conduct litter drives in beaches and parks. Avoid using plastic. I think our audience has already come up with avoiding using plastic. Uh, I think still many of us are guilty. We do use. single use plastic and then we use packages which have foil and paper and plastic in them like you know for chips and biscuits all of us keep munching so there is a lot of build up of litter there litter drives are being conducted by uh, learners quite a lot in many uh, urban and rural areas uh, but recently i read that in juhu beach in mumbai on one day the volunteers collected up to 4000 kg of trash on just one single day so you can imagine how much we were littering our beaches and the last one priya yes meena talking about uh, it talks about avoid wasting food only buy products that you need so obviously the food wasting point uh, you know our weddings our festivities there is so much excess food and there is so much food wastage i also know of many ngos now uh, who come in uh, to collect these this excess food if you contact them in advance and let them know that you have an event so you might need support from them they then go and distribute this within communities that really need the food and yes. uh, the last bit about only buying products that we need i think i am very guilty of doing this all, all this online shopping that i keep doing 
and you know just buying in like splurging on it and buying things which i actually don't need exactly yes absolutely i think all of us are guilty of it not just you priya okay thank you very much lot of responses have been coming in in the chat box thank you for all your ideas um now priya will be talking about the future of english yes so uh we've been talking about multilingual approaches throughout the session encouraging and promoting use of multilingual approaches uh, on these lines i just like to highlight uh, a very landmark publication by the british council the future of english which is a major research program coordinated by the british council it provides a voice for stakeholders throughout the world and it is shaping the agenda for further discussion on this topic uh, for the research and planning into the use of english as well as approaches to english language teaching and learning throughout the world uh, you can access it by clicking on the link uh, once this presentation is made available to you or by scanning the qr code which is on the slide uh, we have also linked this in the resources section yes there is Over a, a link Mina. yeah thank you priya so uh, finally let's have some reflective thoughts food for thought uh, these are questions which you can think about take away with you think about them and maybe act on them in the context of the sdgs we have looked at so far which ones are you most likely to adapt to your classroom and why the second one is how effectively can you help learners practice these principles in their school home and community just two simple questions for you to think about and here we have maybe we can have mina if we have the time maybe we can have them uh, have a couple of responses in the chat maybe yes please What go ahead in the yeah i think they could in the meantime i'll just run them through this credits there are just two pages of credits and sources and there are some resources if you're interested uh, if you're interested in any further research or further interest in looking there are there are youtube videos and there is reading as well yes people are saying goal for gender equality education is important to apply to all goals yes jubair khan very true very profound statement so most people Absolutely. have gone with goal 4 i think yes quality education and everything and, else uh, i think sankit good. also yeah yeah sankit also talks about how gender equality is the need of the hour and needs to be understood and taught in in the country yes and i think it's important also to link all these goals to the others for example we looked at all those lesson plans and those lesson clips where it's not just one goal isn't it priya it's always something yes. which is linked to other goals as well very true they're all interlinked and very yeah you can i think it's 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 important for uh, the current generation and the future generation to yes. be made aware of this and to act on it yes 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 somebody has talked about transport fuel being a danger for society and we have to plant trees implement reading and libraries at all levels excellent he is a librarian mr ramesh thank you ramesh okay i think this brings us to the end of the presentation thank you very much for being a great art audience very participative and i'd like to leave you with a quotation by albert einstein we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them again something for all of us to think about thanks to everyone and uh, very happy to have had all of you with us today priya yeah. thank you everyone i completely second that uh, thank you for being such a participative audience thank you for engaging with the session and uh, you know making it very lively and interactive thank you to Over priya to and meena for this session and to the ndli and to everyone for such active participation a lot of very good ideas in terms of pollution and fossil fuels and education and gender equality uh, does anyone have any questions for our speakers today i know you responded during the chat but please type your questions in the chat box uh, so we can take them up
it's great to see people from all across the country, so many librarians, so many people. There was somebody doing their PhD in SDG. So I'm sure they have studied a lot, almost as much as Meena and Priya, who've been working hard researching this. Did you see the number of slides we had in terms of their references and other resources that uh, we could look at? Uh, we will also be uploading this on YouTube on both the NDLI uh, page and the British Council page. Uh, please let us know what else you would like to do in terms of these webinars and any questions you have about today's session. Courses for teachers to teach practical courses. Thank you. I'm already a part of SDG member at my university. Saloni is saying, somebody is saying, why does government not take action against single-use plastic? Uh, yes, that's a very big issue. I think that we're all uh, facing with single-use plastic. I think it's uh, it has to be stopped, I think, at the level in the production. Uh, you know, the people who... There's a word for it. You know what it is, Meena? The people who actually produce it. Um, because it's everywhere. It's in shampoo. We get sachets. We get chips. Yes. We get biscuits. Um, and yes, I mean, yes, it's yes. a, I don't know, 20 rupee shampoo sachet. And I think that that plastic is going to live for I don't know how many years. That is the tragedy. Thank you. Somebody said eco brick collection started in our school how will be permanent member of SDG um, somebody is here from IIT Roorkee can we start any society or chapter at your college level that's a very good idea um, any suggestions Meena and Priya on how to maybe have a club at the college level and what we should do yes yes I can uh, think of already uh, we've done a project actually uh, Michelle uh, with Chennai Corporation where uh, we've had these clubs, teacher clubs and leadership clubs with the uh, learners. And uh, they are practicing all these, many of these things. They are going on drives. They are doing advocacy and uh, trying to educate their neighborhoods. So it's possible at school level and it's possible at college level, depending on the level of their, uh, whatever level of education they are at. I think we have a lot of people from higher education here and they have been saying, somebody has mentioned that we can do Nandini. We can do role plays on SDG to create awareness every month, a class. That's a very good idea. Yes. Every month you can work on a different SDG and you can have a drive or a club meeting. There's so many issues in every city we face, whether it's the deforestation, whether it's the pollution, whether it's cutting trees, widening roads. I mean, we've been through so many examples that we have shared. Uh, I'm sure your students will have a lot of ideas themselves because students are very active. It's a facing them. They can feel the effects of, you know, climate change and the, the problems that we are facing and they are quite active themselves. Yes, um, I think our student populations are also being affected. They are being impacted by global climate change, isn't it? Just think of all the people who have become homeless now within Delhi uh, because of the Yamuna coming up. Think of all the, the people. The whole of Himachal has been washed out. Uttarakhand yes. has been washed out. I mean, it's it's we are feeling it here uh, every day, I think. And somebody suggested here that we should plant trees. And that's what we try to do. Even if you live in an apartment, you can have a few plants or something to uh, help with the... Uh, you know, the whole deforestation. Dr. Sunil Kapadia has a good uh, suggestion here. Next time, we'll have some experience of few institutions who are already applying SDGs in some way, and then we can share it. I think that's a very good suggestion. Uh, we can make it more interactive, and you can have people actually presenting what they have done. If it's possible, you can do that. Yes. Tirtika Sinha has a great idea. We need to use plastic to make the road. It's true. Because the roads are, between the heavy rain and the amount of plastic, the roads have potholes. So, uh, I mean, the amount of traffic and the amount of rain, the roads are breaking down. So I think in some places they have been using plastic to make roads. Neetu says, I think there is a need for reusing uh, to reduce the impact of polythene. 
yeah basically re uh, recycling or reusing plastic uh, instead of just uh, disposing of single use plastic true there's a whole abid das mentions we have a big community of uh, rag pickers and things who live off this plastic business but uh, so where is saying it's already used in manufacturing rural roads um yes we would like to have these webinars more frequently we will be working we are very happy that we are working in partnership with uh, ndli this is the first of hopefully many uh, i hope it has been a useful session thank you very much uh, first of all let me apologize for the delay i was supposed to join the webinar at 5 but due to some unforeseeable reason which came up suddenly today i couldn't come at 5 anyway i am fortunate that i have been able to come now and join do i missed most of the webinar so first of all let me thank the british council and india line for jointly co-hosting this webinar for a very illuminating lecture by our educator mina was delivered and i think which will be very useful for all the participants so i thanks and congratulate both british council and my colleagues in india line for organizing this webinar the ndl or national digital library of india is a government project to enemy i see national mission for education to information and communication technologies this project was initiated in 2015 with an idea to create a digital library which is which would be available to every citizen in this country so the ndl currently host about 100 millions of contents covering almost all the fields and the contents varies from primary level to research level also contents are available for lifelong learners or learn learners who are not associated with any organization this ndli contents are available over 400 languages which includes 39 indian languages and we have user interfaces on 11 languages we have developed on our own that is in house developed some verticals or some portals as we can say they are the career verticals which includes training and preparation for various career level examination that includes railway recruitment board public service commission upsc banking service and so on we have also developed a separate portal for preparation for joint entrance and neat je and neat so these will be very useful to all people who are aspiring to apr for those tests ndl has also developed a portal known as deepak which describes the various physical challenge condition like autism blindness deafness and so on the content as you mentioned already are available for school levels which covers almost all the school boards in this country the national as well as the state boards and we have the textbooks available for the national ncert and cbsc though textbook for all boards are not in general available only those which are copyrighted free they are available with us similarly for higher education we have huge number of content as i mentioned that we have near about 100 million content as of now 
and we have also developed an interlibrary loan facility to cater to all users with subscribed contents. The contents which are not available in NDLI, we have some facilities to borrow it from other libraries for, who subscribe for that content, that article, and then pass it to the Con, pass, pass it to the user who needs it. But remember that this is this will not be available to all users in the country. This will be available only those who ask for it. So that is interlibrary loan facilities. Recently, we have developed a dedicated library for Telangana governor, governor of Telangana. And there are requests for various other states also, including Tamil Nadu, JNK, who have asked to develop digital library from their governor's official portal. The another function that NDLI usually do that NDLI helps all the user institution to handhold with NEP 2020. NDLI has the mechanism which helps the other institution to handhold NEP 2020. NDLI through NDLI club tries to reach to various schools, colleges, and organizes events, webinar, as such that this is one such webinar for our valued partner, British Council of India collaborated or joined with us to present this webinar. So it's my request to all the participants here to use NDLI and also to propagate NDLI to all parts of the corner. The repository that we have is huge, is 100 million plus and counting. And so we hope that every citizen of this country will try to use this huge repository for their requirement. And this is my humble request to all the participants here who joined today's webinar to disseminate and propagate NDLI. Thank you very much.